Yeah, last time we were looking at uh, the different types of photographs, and in particular, we looked at the two uh, major types that uh, that include uh, ground photographs and aerial photographs. But we say that the ground photographs can still be subdivided into two, where we talked about the ground horizontal and also talked about the ground uh, bleak photograph. Maybe to, to remind you, we talked about uh, ground photographs, ground horizontal, we say that they are taken when the, the, the photographer is directly facing the object in question and takes the the, the photo of that object at the same uh, elevation. Then also said that uh, ground oblique photographs are taken when uh, uh, a photographer or a cameraman is standing maybe at a low gradient and taking at a high gradient, much as it is on the ground. I gave an example of someone standing in a valley, then he takes the photo of a given highland or mountain. That is a, uh, a ground oblique photograph. That is an angle of about 45 degrees. Or standing at the top of the hill, then you take the photo of the, the, the feature in the valley. That still is a ground oblique photograph. But also talked about uh, uh, analyzing these photographs or studying them further, but we, we are to divide them into subsections of foreground, middle ground, and background for easy interpretation of the features that are on that uh, photograph. But here, yeah, we also noted that we can subdivide them into left, center, and then right of both the foreground, middle ground, and the background. And this is very important in that it helps us to zero on to the feature in question in case we are supposed to analyze a given part of that photograph. Then when it comes to aerial photographs, last time we also said that aerial photographs can be subdivided into two. We can have aerial vertical, whereby someone maybe is in an aircraft, <coughs> directs the, the camera onto the, onto the ground and takes the photograph of that object vertically downwards and therefore we shall have a vertical aerial photograph then we also have the other one we talked about but uh, aerial oblique he or she can be in an aircraft but then it hits the camera and it takes the, the photo of a given slope on the earth surface and therefore the images will appear different from each other and such a uh, photograph we refer to it as uh an aerial oblique photograph. But then today we are going to look at a description of reliefs. Hey, someone, maybe you can mute your mic so that you, all, all of you can hear clearly. Yeah, you can, you can mute yes. your mics so that we can hear each other well. Unless you have a question, you have a question, that's when you can unmute and then we can proceed. But, if all the microphones are on, we may not easily hear the normal interruptions. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, we can proceed. Today we are going to look at description of relief on a given photograph. We are given a photograph, it has relief features, maybe there are relief features, of course, we are talking about hills, valleys, plains, plateaus, spurs, gentle slopes, steep slopes, ridges, conical hills, flat top hills, and many others. If they are on a given photograph, how can we easily describe them? In the first place, we have to identify them, and then too, we may be asked to describe their appearance, describe their formation. Now, before interpretation of these physical features, it is normally very important to first identify them on the photo by giving a, a very rough idea, general idea ab about the area shown on the photograph. And therefore, in describing these landforms or relief features, uh, we sometimes need to give the processes, we need to give the 
uh, the, the, the forces that are responsible for their formation. And in this case, we talk about different landscapes. We have flat landscapes, we may have hidden landscapes. We talked about we have valleys, which may be narrow or deep valleys, depending upon how the photograph is uh, has been taken. But in simple terms, we need to describe the formation. And therefore, this calls us to uh, remember or bring out the description that we have studied in section B of this paper, which is geomorphology. If you studied about faulting and looked at the block mountains, how they are formed, you also looked at the formation of the Rift Valley. Just in case, uh, just in case there is a question about formation of a higher land, uh, very much related to uh, block mountains. Therefore, you can use the same theory in order to explain its formation. But once again, under geomorphology, we have also studied uh, the processes of holding, the processes of volcanism in which highlands are described. The formation of highland is looked at and therefore it is very important that we use the same knowledge in order to uh, describe the formation of relief features that are shown on given photographs i'm going to give you examples i'm going to give you uh, uh, certain photographs that we have here and therefore we shall use them uh, in, in the description of these aspects that we are handling today so uh, let me try to put it on the screen and uh, so that we can be able to see it. Okay, I think we are able to see uh, one of the photographs in the, on the screen. Yeah, I don't know if you are able to identify which type of relief. We first identify the type of feature. Can someone identify the type of feature, relief feature in the background before we look at even the formation and the area where it could have been taken? Can, can you identify the, the relief feature on the screen, shown on the screen? Are you able to see it clearly on the screen? The relief feature. And incidentally, this one is in color, the form, but normally the ones we, uh, we handle are in black and white. But since for, well, it is for explanation of purposes, then we can also use this. But later on, I will give you uh, the black and white photos. Precious, do you see the, the photograph? Okay, now this one that we have here is what we may refer to as a, a conical hill. It is a conical hill because it is of its appearance being wide at the bottom and then somehow pointed at the top. There are a number of these conical hills you can see both in the foreground in the middle ground, and if you move into the background, you can see these other pointed hills, wide at the bottom, and then pointed at the top, just as we looked at a cone, maybe I think in the, it could be the map, a cone pointed at the top with some wide or circular uh, base. So likewise, if you look at these hills, the appearance, this is a conical hill, wide at the bottom, then some are pointed at the top wide at the bottom, pointed at the top. Even these ones you have in the background, you can easily see that they are pointed at the top and they narrow at the top and then it tend to widen as you get to the base of this very hill. So that is one of the real features that we can have here, which is a conical hill. Now, there may be a number of questions that may be asked about this conical hill under photographic interpretation. Now, one of the questions that we can be asked in this case may be, 
identify yeah. identify the real feature in the four ground or in the middle ground or in the back ground and this takes us to the work which we handled last week because we say that for easy interpretation of photographs it is very important for us to always uh, divide this photograph into three parts the, the area that is nearest to you is the foreground then the middle one as we can see this is the middle ground and then the farthest from you is the back ground so now in, in case we are asked to explain to identify the feature then we just go to the ground in equation and then we're able to identify that it is a conical here that is question one identification of the feature on the photograph a conical here but now they may ask you some other questions related to uh, this uh, conical here and the question may be explain or describe how the feature identified in A above was formed. And as I told you before, this now uh, calls us to go back to section B, geomorphology, the work we studied about leaf features, formation of hills, formation of highlands, formation of mountains. And therefore we use the same description. So in this case, we can use the description of highlands in uh volcanic activity how is a given highland formed we know that under volcanic activity of volcanism we have the movement of molten material right from the interior of the earth that is measured in the mantle layer and this molten rock molten material moves through the cracks or the fissures that are within the interior and then it spreads, it builds on the earth surface. And normally uh, the, the one which uh, produce uh, the, the, the magma that produces uh, these uh, rigid kind of features with the steep slopes is normally acid in nature because we said the magma is normally in two forms, basic, which is very watery, which is very fluid and therefore can flow for long distances before solidification. And then the other acid lava, which is, I mean, the acid lava, which is so thick, so viscous, so that once it comes out of the vent, it quickly hardens around the vent. It quickly solidifies around the vent, thereby producing features with steep slopes. And in this case, we can have uh, one of the examples as this conical here that we can see in the uh, we can see on the screen. So a conical here in basically we can describe it as a landform that is formed out of viscous magma that originates from the interior of the earth. And this viscous magma is acid in nature. And therefore, once it reaches the surface, the earth surface, it pulls, solidifies, hardens, producing a landform with steep slopes, as we can see it in the foreground and in the background. It seems uh, precious. That is, it, it, you have a very poor network. I see you coming, going, something like that. I don't I think you have, you seem to be having poor network in your area. But uh, however, uh, that's how we can describe the formation of this land landform. And you can even illustrate, draw this landform on our answer sheet, well labeled uh, to earn a small max but this may not be the only question because i looked at identify the landform in the photograph then to formation that is part b for formation of this landform the landform is a conical here and now i've just described its formation under volcanic activity then three or part c we will find another question and the question may be identify the problems faced by people living in the area shown on the photograph. What kind of problems are likely to be faced by people that live in this area on the photograph? Now, I'd given you some summary that helps you to, uh, to easily get these answers. 
Whenever you see an air with the steep slopes, then you should expect the following. One, if it is a highland and has steep slopes, then you expect such an air to easily experience soil erosion as one of the problems. Then two, landslides. Three, difficult in the construction roads. Difficult in construction of settlements, among others. And therefore, we can able to answer this uh, question in this way. We don't list them as um, I've said, but we are, we are supposed to describe or even explain how these problems come about and how they affect the people in the area. How do we state our answers if the question? What I uh, explain the problems faced by the people living in the area shown on the photograph. So the first problem, as we had listed before, is soil erosion. So we can say that people in the area experience soil erosion, evidenced by steep slopes in the foreground of the photograph or in the background of the photograph. So it means all our answers must be having the problem and then the evidence from the photograph as well as the ground in which you can easily locate it. Yes, any question? Someone with a question? Yes. Is there someone with a question? Uh, someone, Blake, give me some, some sound in the background. If you have a question, it is okay to get to interrupt me so that we can all move at the same level. Don't be left behind. Is there a question, members? Yes? Okay, if there's no question, then we can proceed. We can proceed. So we are trying to identify the problems faced by the people living in the area shown on the photograph. One, because I was noted that we have steep slopes, then one of the problems may be soil erosion. Soil erosion evidenced by the steep slopes in the foreground or in the middle ground of the photograph. That is problem number one. But we're not just on the stating this the experience soil erosion. What is the evidence? The evidence is the steep slopes because they're the ones which encourage soil erosion. Then where do we see this on the photo? That's when you can say in the foreground or in the middle ground of the photograph. So we can go to the second one, uh, the second challenge or problem that is likely to be faced by the people living in the area in the photograph shown on this screen. The second one is the landslide. The second problem is over landslides. But I told you, as you state the answer, you must state the problem, then evidence of that problem and the ground of that very, uh, the ground on which that feature is seen uh, on that photograph. So the second one is people experience landslides in the area, evidenced by steep slopes, where in the background or on the middle ground of the Photograph. So we can state it as landslides as the second problem, evidenced by steep slopes, because we can see the steep slopes in the middle ground or in the foreground of the photograph. The other problem that we can note here is difficulty in the construction of settlements. And this explains the reason as well. I don't see even many in the here. Difficulty in the construction of settlements evidenced by steep slopes in the foreground and the middle ground of the photograph. So have difficulty in construction of settlements evidenced by steep slopes in the foreground and the background. Number four, the fourth problem that we can identify on this photo is difficulty still in the construction of roads or transport routes. 
difficulty in construction of transport routes, evidenced by steep slopes in the which ground, foreground, and middle ground of the photograph. The next challenge or problem that is, can be faced by the people in this area can be difficulty in farm mechanization. If you look at the photograph clearly, you may not use a combined harvester here, you may not use a tractor here because of the nature of the reef of the leaf that may make cultivation very difficult. So it is difficulty in the farm mechanization. Which mechanism is just the use of machines like tractors combined outside. Or difficulty in crop cultivation. In crop cultivation. Evidenced by steep slopes in the foreground and in the middle ground of the photograph. So take note on how we state these problems, not only listing. They face the problem of farm mechanism, problem of crop cultivation, problem of transport, but where is the evidence? The evidence must be given from the photograph. What you see on the photograph comes as the evidence. And then at the end, you must back your answer with the ground so that the examiner may easily see and prove if your answer is right or wrong. So if we say difficulty in farm mechanization or crop cultivation, it is evidenced by steep slopes in the foreground and the middle ground of the photograph. Now, for relief, that is what you can get. Now, on this very photograph, we don't have only relief features. In the foreground, you can able to see the vegetation types. Clear members, you can easily see the vegetation types. So this means that we can also identify problems that are associated with areas that have thick vegetation cover, as we see in the foreground, but some even in the middle ground, if you look at the middle ground carefully, you can also see some shrubs, some trees, and so on. So what kind of problems may arise as a result of the existence of these vegetation types? So we can add there one, I mean, we had written one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now with the, the sixth problem caused by vegetation. We can also, we can note like multiplication of pests and diseases multiplication of pests and diseases, evidenced by thick vegetation, evidenced by, evidenced by thick vegetation, found in the foreground and in the middle ground of the photograph. So I've used the vegetation to bring in the challenge of pests or diseases. And the reason is these vegetation types normally act as breeding grounds for the disease carrying vectors. Yes, a question? Okay, now, so I'm using the vegetation in the foreground and the middle ground to bring about the problem of pests, I mean, uh, multiplication of pests and also the occurrence of diseases. The reason being that these vegetation types act as breeding grounds for the disease carrying vectors. For example, mosquitoes can easily multiply in areas which have big vegetation cover. And at the same time, we can also add the next challenge as um, dangerous wild animals dangerous wild animals as, as the next problem dangerous wild animals evidenced by the thick vegetation in the foreground and middle ground dangerous wild animals evidenced by the thick vegetation in the foreground and in the background 
And remember, when you are stating the wild animals, it is necessary to specify because wild animals are of different types. You may have an antelope there, and instead it is turned into food by the people. So it may not be harmful, it may be food for the people. But however, if animals such as lions are there, if they are leopards, these ones are very harmful to man. And these are the wild animals that we are talking about in this case. Even by the snakes, if they are there, because they are harmful to man. So in trying to bring out wild animals, we must specify that we look at only dangerous or harmful wild animals. Those which are likely to, in, to harm man in one way or another. Or even marking kids, I think, can also be in this category because they can destroy man's crops. Now, the thick vegetation that is also in the middle ground, the trees there, make it difficult for man to, car, um, to set up uh, houses or settlements. So you can also add there difficulty in construction of settlements due to the presence of uh, vegetation or thick forest in the middle ground. That can also be a point. Okay, Vegetation, if it is thick, can make it difficult for man to set up uh, settlements, can make it difficult for man to carry out cultivation, can make it difficult also man to, to, to set up the transport use. So it can also be an evidence for the first uh, uh, the first uh, Okay, the, the, the two points that we noted under mechanization and uh, construction of settlements in the previous points that we noted. So any questions so far or we can proceed? Okay, we can move on. See, maybe even at the end, I'll give you uh, time to ask more questions. So we have answered the second question, which is, I, I mean, uh, identify the problems that are faced by people living in the area shown on the photograph. Now, there is a common question that normally comes on this part. And the question is, by giving evidence from the photograph, identify an area in East Africa where the photograph could have been taken. By giving evidence from the photograph, identify an area in East Africa where the photograph could have been taken. It is very common, actually almost all the questions, class questions and neighbor questions have that number there. By giving evidence from the photograph, identify an area in East Africa where the photo could have been taken. Now, this question, it is starting with evidence, by giving evidence. And something that we need to note under photographic interpretation is, uh, just as I, we said under map work the other time, in A level, whatever we write under photographic interpretation, we back it with the evidence. And normally our evidence is given in the form of grounds. That's why we started by dividing our photograph in two sections, the foreground, middle ground, and the background. So that the examiner is very sure that you know which corner of the photo that you are talking about and therefore interpret it with ease. So which area in East Africa can we identify? We look at what is dominating the photograph, what is taking three quarters, at least three quarters of the photo. And in this case, uh, we look at uh, uh, the highlands, these highlands, these conical hills. So we can look at any area in East Africa that is dominated by highlands or hills and therefore it will be a uh, right to be uh, written as our answer here so in highland is in east africa we can talk about the eastern part of uganda we can talk of Kapchora, we can talk of Solonko, we can talk of kigiz highlands we can talk about kenya highlands those are the possible areas that we can note in this photograph so how do we write our answer having identified various areas, Kenya Highlands, these Highlands, Africa, Pachora, Solonko, Mbali. So we just select one and back it with that uh, evidence. So we can say that this photograph would have been taken maybe in Kapchora. Mm -hmm. 
evidenced by highlands or hills in the foreground of the photograph. Capture evidence by highlands. Then you state the ground in the foreground and middle ground of the photograph. So we must name the area, give the evidence, as well as the ground on the photo, so that the examiner will try to check the foreground. Do you have any highland, any hills there? They are there. Then it means the answer is, are there any hills in the capture? Yes, they are there. So it becomes a correct answer. So we can say capture evidence by highlands or hills in the foreground and middle ground of the photo. I think that is done. I wanted us to move to the next photograph to help us answer other questions that are associated with relief. Because at least we talked about description, identification of relief features, description of relief features, the problems that are likely to be caused by these relief features to man, and then areas in East Africa where such kind of relief features may be, may be found. So I want us to move to the next photograph. I want you to look at your, that's, at your screen. I'm going to look at the next photo and then we use it to pass it. Uh -huh. Much as it is not, a, the, the background is not very clear, but still we can use it for explaining or I, uh, answering some of the questions. Now, I told you before that uh, the ones that we're going to be using later on, they will all, all be black and white, but these are the ones I could easily access at the moment, and uh, still they can help us in understanding these aspects that we have to handle this afternoon. So now, if you look at uh, this photograph, we say that uh, a ground photograph normally has certain characteristics, which I think you're able to look at in the work that I left with you. For instance, if you look at the appearance, I mean the, the foreground, the foreground, these rocks are appearing as if they are bigger than even what could be in the background, what we talked about as perspective. Features appear clearer in the foreground and they tend to reduce in size or they tend not to be very clear when you go to the background. So if you look at the background, you may not easily identify what is there. And this is a typical ground photograph. And then too, we also noted that a ground photograph normally has a horizon. It's just the horizon or the skyline. Hmm? The point where you believe that when you stand there, you can easily touch the, the sky. Hmm? Of course, now you, you can't have such a thinking at your age, but it may be when you're still small, still young, you have a thing that if I move at the, at the, if I go to the top of the hill, then I can easily touch the clouds. And if you look at the, what is in the background here, and that is normally what we call the sky line. But once you reach there, you find the place is very far from the clouds, just as where you are at the moment. So that is the skyline. So in the background, you can easily see the skyline or the horizon, which confirms us that this is a ground photograph. I'm trying to emphasize this in that the other question may be, which, or which type of photograph is shown? or identify the type of photograph that is before you. So the answer would be a ground photograph. And the next question would be, why? So for those who are noting, the question is, identify the type of photograph and why? So the type of photograph in this case is a ground photograph. Why? We just look at the characteristics that we handled in the last or in the previous lesson. One, features in the foreground appear clear or even bigger than those in the background. For instance, we can see these rocks appearing very clear or bigger than the features that are in the 
background. This, that's the first characteristic which confirms that this one is a ground photograph. Then two, the, the photograph covers a smaller area. It covers a smaller area. If it was to be an aerial photograph, it would take far beyond this village because it's taken from above to captures a very wide area. And even other than that, if it was an aerial photograph, it would even show tops of objects, we would not see the landscape, how it appears, where there are, there are valleys, there's like a depression here, mm -hmm. towards it. then a gentle slope. Then another gentle slope, but somewhere behind these ro rocks, there could be a slanting area, some depression behind the rocks, and this tells us that it is a ground photograph. So the second photo aspect, other than uh, the, 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 the ideal perspective would be the photograph tends to cover a small area. Three, it shows the horizon or the skyline in the background. You can see the horizon or the skyline, which confirms us that this one is a ground photograph. Since we see the horizon or the skyline. Mm -hmm. So we can maybe based on those three characteristics. A small area covered to a horizon or skyline shown. Then three, we say the objects are appearing very clear in the foreground. And then uh, this kind of uh, the, the ones in the background tend to, to, they cannot be seen easily. That's why even the people that are very close in the photograph and in the foreground, you can easily see them well, even to the colors they are dressed in. But then we may not see if we may not confirm if there are any people in the background. What we call the perspective, and therefore this confirms us that this one is a ground photograph. Now we go to the third question. The other one was question one. I mean uh, question A for information uh, for identification of relief feature, uh, then the problem is B. Then area in East Africa C, maybe if you can go to D, that is identify the type of C, D1 was identify the type of photo, which we said it is a ground. And then D2, why these are the characteristics that we have just given. But then we can be asked more questions on this very photograph. And the question that may appear here is, Identify the forms of land use in the area shown on the photograph. The forms of land use, or even activities that are carried out in the area shown in the photograph. What are the different activities? What are the forms of land use that we can see on this photograph? So now we can start by looking at all the grounds because the what is in the 